onto styling. So um, you guys have probably had this need before. Um, the, the themes that the we ship in the frameworks are great out of the box. Um, give you a lot of what you need, give you great looking applications, but there's obviously a legitimate need that everybody or many people have to style and change the look of their apps. And you've probably experienced the hassle of trying to do that. So you go and you develop your application wherever you're doing it, architect or not, and you preview it and you see that this component over there doesn't look right, and so you go and inspect the element and try and find what it is and dig down at the CSS and find that and then try and match it to the right SAS variable and open the right file and edit that and compile your SAS and then you preview it again and hopefully it worked and if not then you kind of do that loop again. So the solution that we have in Architect in Architect 3 is to do it right in Architect, right? So Architect already has your full project laid out pretty nicely in the project inspector for you and also you don't have to navigate through your entire flow of your application to get to the component you want. If you want a view that's you know, 20 steps away, you just click on it in Architect and you're right there and you can style it directly. So we think the benefit of exposing this in Architect is that it's going to shorten that feedback cycle for you. So hopefully you'll be able to get the styling and theming that you need done um, quickly. But let's show you. So why don't I pick a touch template? So let's pick the task list. So if I look at the preview, actually, why don't I just create it? I'm just going to create it. So let's look at the view. You can get a look at what it just looks like. So this is our simple task list. Um, and let's say we now want to go and, and customize its look. So if you click on resources and you click on library, this was actually available in Architect 2.2. You can actually click and select between our pre can themes. So if you want to look at what the, the Blackberry theme or the Windows theme would look like with this, then you can look at it like that. Um, and now in Architect 3, if you want to actually go and customize, you'll actually click on our themes here in our toolbox and you'll add a theme to your to your project. Architect asks you if you want to apply it. So we're going to say yes, apply it. And now you see you have a theme added down here and it says it's applied. So why don't we give it a name? And there it is. So it doesn't really look very different at the moment. So now let's go and actually start modifying things. So this Aaron showed you briefly at the, um, at the keynote, but let's dig into a little more detail. So we can use the filter here to find something that we want to change. So let's pick base, so we can find our base color. And what, what the things that are listed here are all the global variables that you can edit. So this is our base color here. It's this nice shade of blue, but let's say I decide that I don't like that particular shade of blue. So you can see that we have a pretty nice uh, visual color picker. You can pick any color you want. You can pick it this way, or you can actually edit the, enter the RGB value directly or the hex value directly. And then the other thing for you guys who want to, uh, you know, Chances are you're going to want to reuse the same colors again and again. We have a color palette down here. So let's say that I've decided this new color that I've just picked. And my apologies for my terrible taste in colors. But let's say that's the one I want. And I just added it down here to the template. I mean, to my palette. So I can reuse these colors again and again, which is you know, great for you folks in organizations where you want to sort of standardize on a color palette. Um, so now that I've picked this color, I'll say OK. And you can see that down here, this uh, SAS is being compiled and the color is being changed. Um, so that, that's basically what you saw already. So let's go and do something else. Let's say in addition, you know, I'm looking at my buttons and I don't really like the radius of that button. So let's look for radius and so let's say I want to change the badge radius. I want them to be much rounder. So we'll change that value here. My CSS compiles. And probably better if I did the button instead of the badge. And there we go. My radius changed. Um, so that's great. So now I've edited the, the way these button look, the, the way this button looks in the entire application. So if I go and look at um, this other view, I can see that these buttons have um, gotten the same, the same changes. But let's say I decide that for some reason I want to style a particular component differently. So if I'm looking at the form panel and I decide that I want 
um, this button here to have some different configuration. So if you see, I've selected it in the project inspector, and down here I have my old config panel that, was new, that, that we had in Architect 2 and now I have my skins panel here. And it's showing me all the UIs that I have available. So it's showing me that it's an action button, and it's, it's showing me that, um, that UI for it at the moment. Uh, and let's say I want to add a new UI, so I want to style just this button. So I've now clicked the plus button here, which added a new skin for me. Well, I just added two of them, actually. And uh, let's say I don't really like the name on Title 2, so I'll call it you know, my skin. And now it's created and applied. So I can now edit that. So let's say I wanted to edit. Oops. It's color. And I shall pick some other color. Let's make it something different. There we go. Compile. And now my color has changed. So this, and now if I wanted to, I could apply the same, um, the same skin to a different component. So this, as I had it set before, it was just applied to the save button. And now if I want, I can apply it to my delete button as well. And it instantly gets applied. Um, so the other things that to know about uh, styling and theming are that to get this set up in the architect preview build that we have, you actually have to tell architect where command is. So I brought up the application settings, and I've scrolled down here. And uh, this setting here is you just need to set the uh, center command path. By the time we ship architect 3, this should get rid of this. But for now, you have to set it here. Otherwise, you'll get an error. Uh, also. We currently, in the Architect 3 preview, um, only allow you to set absolute values for your, for your variables. So you can see here, let's say my gradient here is set to a button, the button gradient. I can't actually do that. in the. I, if I wanted to change this, I'd have to give it an absolute value for now. Again, by the time we ship Architect 3, we should have that resolved. Um, so that is basically styling in a nutshell. Um, there's going to be another session about this tomorrow. We'll give you the details uh, towards the end of the session. But please uh, go and visit that one to learn much, much more about styling and theming. Now, back to Aaron for device testing in the cloud. All right. So now we've developed our application. We've styled it. Um, and we're testing it inside of the browser. Um, one of the things that we need to make sure is the experience that we have inside of Chrome or Safari isn't always the same experience that we have on the device. And furthermore, it's not even the same on the simulator. So you start up the, the iOS simulator or the Android simulator, and it's not the same on the device. Or maybe it's different on the Galaxy, you know, a particular Android phone. And what we've done is we've partnered with a startup called App Purify to provide testing inside of Architect that tests on real devices. So you can deploy your application to a real device and interact with it via the web. So we'd like to, to show that, and we think it has a lot of benefits. Uh, you don't have to manage. So right now at Sencha, we have a device room that has a table like this with devices, right? Um, and we test on those devices to make sure that our things work. and. Something like this really takes a lot of the hassle out of owning these devices uh, so that you don't have to do that and maintaining them. So let's, let's go and we're just going to start a basic project. Um, let's see. Go to touch. I'm supposed to do this one. This is good. So this is a simple location manager project. Uh, I hate cancel. Um, this is a simple location manager project. So you'll see we have a main view here. We have a list panel. 
and then we finally have a panel to enter new pieces. So if we save this, save it location, and I'm gonna launch it in preview. So this this is a typical development environment, right? For for most of us, we have something that looks like we have our web inspector over here on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have what actually looks like the device, and we do a lot of our development inside of here just because it's easier. Um, but then we actually when we actually go to deploy we need to take a look at it on device. So inside of Architect now, you'll see at the top, there's this new test button. And if we click on this, um, we're currently logged in as Gil. Uh, but if you guys download this today, at the top, there will be a link to register for App Purify. And you click that and register. And then here we're going to upload this project to App Purify. So we'll launch App Purify. It's packaging that up and launching it. And so we're prompted with a screen that asks us for what device we'd like to take a look at. So let's use the latest iPhone 5. We're going to reserve this device, install the app. And so we'll see that this is a iPhone 5 running the application that we just created. If we come in here and hit the plus, we'll see that we go to the form. Um, we could, let's add Orlando. So currently, you have to use the, the keyboard. Change it to Orlando. Oh, that's fine. So I'm just copying this, put it in the location. And under better network connection, better network connection, it's much faster. Um, you'll see down here that we've added Orlando, we add the location, and we can see that it's recentered back on that. So within App Purify, as you, as you see with this particular demo, um, the the performance degrades with uh, your internet connection. And this is the same thing that happens to your mobile apps. So App Purify enables you to test different networks. So we can come in here and we can say, look at Wi-Fi. So average Starbucks connection, good, Starbucks high traffic. We can also test under different networks. So what's it like on um, Verizon 3G 4 bars? AT&T under two bars, et cetera. So this is really helpful to take a look at what simulate that application environment. We also have the ability to change the location. So these, dev these physical devices are actually located in a colo. And you can actually take a look and open up, like say, the camera and see where they are. Um, you can also adjust the memory. So some device or some applications that are really memory hungry, um, we could take a look at lowering their the memory available to it and seeing what happens to the application. 
we can also change the orientation here. But the final thing, and I think the thing that's probably the most important, is the fact that we have a HTML5 inspector here. And what this is, is it's just the standard um, inspector that we've come to know and use inside of WebKit, uh, inside of Safari, and in Chrome. And we can come in here. We have a console. We have all the elements, everything that's in here, the resources available. So real quick, I'm just going to go to console, say alert, hi, and come back over here. And we see that it's actually communicating to that device. So you're getting a full development environment on a real device. So we can come in here and we can do anything that we would typically be able to do uh, to debug or look at network requests on a real device. App Purify also has a bunch of cool stuff to enable robot or monkey testing to go through your application and click just everywhere, drag, try to break your app, see if you can do it, um, as well as recording tests. So recording where you go and things like that. And they actually have a session tomorrow. Uh, there's, there's a few representatives here. And uh, they'll be going over that and all of the, the stuff that's in App Purify. Um, inside of Architect, when you launch it, so we just looked at one flow. Uh, we're not going to be able to look at the other for concerns of time. But you can also do a URL. And one of the things that a lot of businesses will need is to be able to tunnel back into their environment. So maybe you're making a JSONP request to a server that's not available. So what we can do is we can set up a VPN tunnel out to the actual physical devices into your network so that you can access those. Um, and then the, the automated testing as well. So there's basically three flows, either uploading the project like we just did, pointing to a internal network URL uh, and put, putting a secure tunnel in place, or automating the testing. And uh, App Purify is a, you can register for a free account for the, the rest of the month. And then the, there's a package plan that uh, the App Purify guys will go through. As it's an external service, it's not uh, part of Sencha. All right. Um, I think we're good.